Hello friends, today we will discuss dedicated freight corridor of India that is also called DFC. In order to meet the increasing demand of freight traffic, Indian Railways has embarked upon a very ambitious project of constructing dedicated new double line freight corridors to carry the traffic with higher axle loads. Now why it was done? The Indian Railways Golden Quadrilateral linking the four metropolitan cities of Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Howrah and its two diagonals Delhi, Chennai and Mumbai, Howrah comprises of 16% of route but carry more than 52% of passenger traffic and 58% of revenue earning freight traffic on Indian railways. This trunk route is highly saturated with line capacity utilization varying between 115% to 150%. Over the years, Railways has lost the share in freight traffic from 88% in 1551 to less than 26% in 21-22. Not only this, the national highways along these corridors comprising just 0.5% of road network carried almost 40% of the road traffic. The Ministry of Railways in its budget for 2005-06 announced for creation of dedicated freight corridors in India. The feasibility study report was submitted to Ministry of Railways in October 2007 and DFCCIL that is Dedicated Freight Corridor Corporation of India Limited was incorporated as a Schedule A company under the Companies Act 1956 on 30th October 2006. The cost estimate of Rs. 81,459 crore for Eastern and Western dedicated freight corridor including land cost was approved by the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs in June 2015 after a gap of 9 years. And this cost included the construction cost as well as the land cost. The cost for the project is funded by a combination of debt from bilateral and multilateral agencies like JICA and World Bank and equity from Ministry of Railways. And this is the route plan. It starts from Ludhiana in Punjab, goes up to Dadri via Ambala, Saharanpur and Meerut. And from here, it branches into two parts. This is the Western Corridor, Blue Line, and this is the eastern corridor red line and black line here basically indicates the existing railway line. Both of these are parallel to existing railway track. The western corridor is 1506 kilometer with three sections and it passes through the state of UP, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat and Maharashtra. It goes up to JNPT. The eastern corridor is of 1337 kilometer plus 538 kilometer of this last section that is Sonnagar to Dankuni. This is under PPP, private public private partnership. And this corridor passes through the state of Punjab, Haryana, UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, and West Bengal. There are several advantages of having dedicated freight corridors. The first is mixed traffic flow of goods train and passenger train is segregated. This will certainly improve average speeds of both the passenger and the freight trains and the sectional capacity will substantially improve. Second, higher axle load wagons plying on TFC will carry more load per train. And third, existing corridors will be relieved of heavier freight trains thus giving relief in maintenance especially to old existing bridges. The fourth one is since there will be no level crossing, the passenger corridors could also run tilt body passenger trains up to the speeds of 200 km per hour. Fifth one, it will reduce the unit cost of transportation, inventory cost and will provide greater customer satisfaction. And finally, it will relieve existing rail corridor for additional passenger traffic. There are several salient features of this project. It is a dedicated freight corridor covering 3,381 route kilometer 
passing through nine states. This is a mega railway project with track linking exceeding 6,000 km. It's challenging in terms of land acquisition, which basically is of the order of 11,827 hectares. The project involved earthwork of 2,371 lakh cubic meters. Its complete elimination of level crossing gates on this network. There will be 596 major bridges and 4,643 minor bridges. 300 road over bridges, 557 road under bridges and 52 rail flyovers. And there are 126 stations along the alignment. This project of DFC has several unique design features which are different from those on existing network of Indian Railways. For example, moving dimension, height and width. In case of existing railway network, the width of the wagon is 3.2 meter, height is 4.265 meter. It is changed to 3.66 meter by 7.1 meter on western corridor and 3.66 meter by 5.1 meter on eastern corridor. Now this western corridor will carry double stack container and therefore this height is 7.1 meter. Train length 700 meter on existing network it is up to 1500 meter on dedicated freight corridor. Similarly, train load is almost doubled from 5,400 ton to 12,000 tons. Maximum speed, the DFC route is designed for 100 km per hour. Axle load is increased from existing 22.9 ton to 25 ton for track structure and 32.5 ton for bridge and formation. Grade is reduced from 1 in 100 to 1 in 200. Curvature on existing network of Indian Railway is limited to 10 degree, whereas in DFC route it is limited to 2.5 degree only. Station spacing is also increased to 40 km and signaling it is automatic signal with 2 km spacing in auto territory. So these are some of the important design features of dedicated freight corridors. Construction of DFC is adopting world-class and state-of-the-art technology. And if you look at the sewaging features, these features include 32.5 ton axle load as compared to present 22.5 ton axle load to facilitate movement of special wagons which can carry higher dimension and heavier cargo. Mechanized track laying. First time, new railway track is being laid using mechanized means such as use of new track construction machines. It ensures accuracy and quality. Kent in turnout zones also. First time in Indian railways to avoid change in rail plane, turnouts would also be canted. It will ensure smooth riding and reduce rolling contact fatigue. Use of head hardened rails for longer life and lesser maintenance of the track. Use of modern turnout. Thick web with weldable CMS crossing. Blanket thickness based on quality of base soil which result into economy in construction. Continuous welded rails and long welded rails through points and crossings will enhance safety by avoiding free joint and reducing impact in turnout joint. The current status of the project as of November 2023 is like this. The total length of Eastern DFC is 1337 kilometer, of Western DFC 1506 km and target for both of these corridors is December 2024. Major part of this project has already been completed by now. If you look at Eastern DFC, the complete 1337 kilometer has been commissioned. All the sections, all six sections have been commissioned. And on Western DFC, there is one section from Palanpur to Makarpura that is 290 kilometer. This will be 
sanctioned or commissioned in March 2024. And this section also, Sachin to Vetarna, this will be commissioned in March 2024. And the next section is expected to be complete by 31st December 2024. So by the end of next year, the both corridors will be completed. Funding for this project has been from different sources. For Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridor, a funding of US dollar 2,195 million is coming as a loan from World Bank. And Ministry of Railways is also providing equity funding of rupees 3,679 crore. And the last section on this corridor that is from Sonnagar to Dankuni which is of 538 kilometer is being developed through public private partnership. The entire Western corridor is being funded through loan from JICA in two phases. In addition to these Eastern and Western dedicated freight corridor, there is now proposal for three more corridors. First is East Coast corridor, which will be from Kharagpur to Nidubrola. And this corridor stretches 1080 km, traverses through three states of India, West Bengal, Odisha and then Andhra Pradesh. It mostly runs parallel to the existing Kharagpur vijayawada coastal railway line. It also passes over three zonal railway, namely Southeastern, East Coast and South Central Railway. The second is East-West Corridor. This East-West Corridor from Bhusawal to Dankuni, including Ispar line from Raj Kharswan to Andal, passes through five states, namely West Bengal, Jharkhand, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, and Maharashtra. Length of the main line is 1551 kilometer, and length of the Ispar line is 187 running kilometer. This corridor has further been extended from Bhusawal to Palghar. And the third one is North-South Corridor from Itarsi, Nagpur, Vijayawada. Passes through four states, namely Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Length of this corridor is 980 running kilometer and Railway Board has further extended this corridor from Vijayawada to Nidubrolu. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question, you can write in the comment box.